Welcome to Art Is. Today we're going to journey into the lives of Jim Tweedy, the creator of the red cat named Charlie, the designer of Monet Monet Gardens in Grayton Beach, Jonathan Gwynn, and an up-and-coming sculptor, Jacob Lawrence. We'll begin the show with Jim Tweedy. You may have seen his work in the Richard Russell Gallery on Royal Street in New Orleans. Jim has also shown his generosity along the Gulf Coast by donating original paintings to the Society for the Prevention to Cruelty to Animals and the Pole of the Point Charities. These are to be auctioned off to help raise money for their causes. All proceeds for the Polo at the Point go to fund cancer research at the University of South Alabama. You will also soon be able to see Jim's work in galleries all across the United States in the next several years. What makes the Red Cat so appealing is how Jim incorporates unique and very often humorous themes into his Red Cat paintings. My father was a Disney animator back in the 1930s. Of course, I wasn't born then, but uh, he didn't stay with that. But uh, he taught me when I was a child. Uh, really, he gave me the, taught me the basics of drawing, and we would spend hours at the kitchen table coming up with cartoon characters and really fun things like that. So uh, that was the basic. Uh, that was the start I had, or where I got uh, interested in art, and I was able to do it. Yeah, apparently, it runs in the family somewhat. And uh, then after that, I went on into uh, school, to art school uh, college at Southeastern in Hammond, Louisiana, and then the New Orleans Art Institute, most importantly, after that, where I studied under a fellow named Walter LaBiche, who had been a head illustrator for NASA. And I really learned how to do everything from technical illustration, and isometric uh, exploded uh, views of engines and things like that, to photo retouching, uh, to cartoon work or oil portraits. So I really uh, had a well-rounded education in art. Charlie the Red Cat developed as an idea I had really as a spoof, uh, as a fellow that does another uh, colored animal called a blue dog. And sort of as a joke, I was doing sports art primarily and I had a lot of success with it. And I still do a little, but, but what happened was uh, I painted, I thought it'd be funny to paint my cat Charlie, you know, that hangs out in my studio with me. Um, red, that would sort of be the opposite of the blue dog. It was supposed to be a one-time thing. I was never going to do it again. I hadn't planned to. And a lady came in the gallery. We, we put it in the gallery as a joke. A lady came in and said, uh, I just bought a blue dog and I'd like to get a red cat. So she commissioned a small one. And uh, we thought that was kind of funny. So the next day, and it happened again. Another lady came in and commissioned a small little red cat painting. And I told my wife, you know, I, I think I might be onto something here. And so I developed the character, Charlie the Red Cat. And I, kind of drew on some of the experiences I had with my father as far as uh, uh, the Disney type of style where you have a more or less a realistic background with a sort of a cartoon character built into it. And I put Charlie in different funny situations and places and um, try to find double meanings and jokes such as uh, one I just finished that's timely is Evander Red Cat where Charlie's got a bite out of his ear or um, the traveling snailsman, Charlie's riding on the back of a giant snail. All these crazy paintings uh, started selling, and in fact, I just finished the 313th Red Cat. Okay, recently I signed a uh, contract with a big major publisher out of Los Angeles. Uh, the name of the publisher is Collector's Editions, and they're going to start producing Red Cat prints and, uh, in the form of giclés and silk screens. And I also signed a deal with a company, even really is more exciting to me, called Art Impressions, um, also out of Los Angeles. And they are taking Charlie the Red Cat on the road to different licensing conventions. And different companies now are beginning to license Charlie to put on to different items, such as uh, I just signed a deal with um, a company called Landmark Calendar, which is the biggest calendar company in the world. And they're going to be putting out a Red Cat calendar starting in 1999. Um, I've also signed deals with companies to put out uh, Red Cat ties and upscale t-shirts and uh, hats and boxer shorts and just about anything you can think of he's starting to come out on now. Before long we hope a line of children's clothing. This is the painting that I did for Doodah Day and all the pets have come when they heard Charlie was the uh, mascot um, this year all the pets different animals some of them really aren't very good house pets but they've come from near and far to participate and uh, we have a giraffe and a moose and a zebra and a tiger and all sorts of different crazy animals. And they're all wearing, if you can see, the Groucho Marx false nose and glasses. That's their costume. And 
Charlie, being a little bit too cool, didn't want to put the costume on, so he's just got his, his traditional yellow shades. What I'll do when I'm going to do a painting like this is, is put the background in. Just, you have to lay it on just as you would see it. Uh, uh, the background, whatever's farthest away. <laughs> I put in the blue sky, building from dark down to light, and then I come in with the tree trunks, just like a tree would grow, the trunk would come up, and then you add the leaves, same way when you paint. And um, put in the road, and then of course the last thing that goes in is the animals, and then Charlie, uh, uh, now there's some, Charlie goes in usually last, but there's some masking off that has to be done, trying to uh, make sure that uh, you don't cover up anything you don't want to cover up, you end up doing uh, more work than you need to. But uh, this particular piece, uh, the background didn't take that long, but the rest of it took, uh, there's probably a hundred hours of work in it, just about. It was a long-term project. <laughs> what we're trying to do now is open Red Cat shops in different parts of the country. We have one uh, slated to open in uh, Fort Worth, um, which, by the way, we're also, uh, reminds me, we're, we're doing a Red Cat internet site that should be ready to go uh, hopefully in September, maybe October, and we're really excited about that. Um, the other thing, uh, in Fort Worth, we're going to have a Red Cat shops that will feature uh, Red Cat merchandise, such as clothing that's being licensed, and the prints, maybe one or two originals. They're kind of hard to spare because they sell so fast out of Royal Street. But uh, we also have another one uh, that's going to open in the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. Uh, as soon as we get a little more merchandise manufactured, they're very excited about that. And uh, then we also have plans, let's see, I think right now in Baltimore and um, in Chicago and in Berlin. We have a, uh, we're working on a deal in Berlin to open a Red Cat shop. So what I want to do is, is uh, while I can't paint enough paintings to fill up all those galleries, uh, we, we can now that we have all these prints on the market and the merchandise, we can have some really neat Red Cat shops opening and that's what my long-term goal. It, it's really exciting for me to see people um, react to the artwork because I, I really, I would, I'm probably a frustrated comedian. If I had nerve, I'd be up on stage in front of people, but this is my way of making people smile and laugh and um, the little double meanings in the paintings. And when somebody looks at the painting and reads the title and laughs, it really makes, makes it all worthwhile because that's, it's all for entertainment. It's not meant to be too extra deep or anything. There's some of the titles you have to kind of wonder about and then you, you, 